So most people like having that blurred out background in their videos or their photos. It looks nice, it brings attention to your subject. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to achieve that blurred out background or as it's more commonly referred to as bokeh. And make sure you stick around to the end where I show you my favorite lens for creating bokeh. Let's get into it. What's going on everyone? My name is Jeremy Gray and welcome back to another tutorial. So today we're talking about bokeh and I'm gonna try to keep this video pretty simple for anyone that's new to YouTube and making videos for YouTube or new to photography. So by now I'm sure you've heard the word bokeh and if you haven't, where have you been? So what exactly is bokeh? Well to put it simply, it's the way a lens renders the out of focus elements of an image. And lots of different factors go into it like focal length, aperture, lens aberration, and your general depth of field and what you're shooting in general all goes into to creating bokeh. So let's start with focal length. Focal length is gonna play a critical role in producing bokeh for your videos or your stills. Typically a longer focal length will grant you more appealing bokeh. That's the general mentality that we all have, isn't it? That's the common thought process, but more goes into it than just focal length. While a longer focal length will get better bokeh, there's some other stuff that goes into it like aperture. Aperture is also gonna play a critical role because the larger your aperture, which is actually the smaller the number of the f-stop, the better of a blurry background that you're gonna get when you separate your subject from the background. So I don't wanna just read off numbers and say things, I wanna actually show you some practical examples making this video right now that you're watching. So I've noticed that a lot of people in my audience shoot a Canon EOS M50, and a lot of YouTubers in general also shoot a Canon EOS M50. So that's the camera that I'm gonna use for these practical examples. And I'm gonna start by using the kit lens, which is not currently mounted. I'm gonna slap the kit lens on right now, the 15 to 45, because chances are if you have an M50, that's probably the first lens that you got with it. So I'm gonna switch over from this 22 over to the kit lens. Boom, and we're on the kit lens now. The 15 to 45 varying aperture kit lens. I prefer using the 22, but I'm gonna start with this lens right now for the examples. Now I'm not gonna lie, the kit lens is not the best for creating that delicious creamy bokeh in the back, but we can achieve a slightly blurry background like I have right now with this kit lens and pretty much any lens. There's just a few steps that we have to take. So if you're vlogging with this kit lens, indoors or outdoors, I wanna recommend that you stay at 15 millimeters because that is gonna give you the widest aperture of 3.5. Like I mentioned, this has a varying aperture, which means as you zoom, the aperture goes smaller. <laughs> and um, once you're at 45, it's a 6.3, which is not gonna be too great, and you really can't even vlog with 45 millimeters anyway. Now this is a little contradictory to what I said earlier where a longer focal length makes better bokeh, but right now we're gonna talk about vlogging specifically and making YouTube content. Now something very important to keep in mind that if you're shooting outdoors, you wanna keep your aperture wide open, but you don't wanna move your shutter speed because that'll ruin your video. So you're gonna wanna use a variable neutral density filter for shooting video. Photos, it won't matter as much because you can crank the shutter. And if you don't know what a variable ND filter is, I'll post a link to my video above where I explain everything. All right, so I'm gonna show you an example real quick. I'm gonna take the variable neutral density filter off this lens because right now I'm at 3.5. And once I take it off, I'm gonna have to crank the aperture. So I'm gonna show you what the difference looks like and we'll see if you see a difference. So this is with the variable neutral density filter on. And this is with the variable neutral density filter off. And I had to go all the way to 7.1 which is not what we want whatsoever. We wanna be the 3.5 or lower range or higher, whichever way you wanna say it. It's so confusing, honestly. The lower the number, the better the bokeh and the wider the aperture. So as you can see, when the aperture is at 7.1, a lot more of the image is actually in focus and when it's down to 3.5, a lot more of the background gets blurred out. See how much better it is with the variable ND on? Moving on. Now another thing to keep in mind is how close you are to the camera, and on the same note, how far away your subject or yourself is from the background is gonna play a critical role in producing that blurry background and that bokeh. Now this background right here, these bushes and trees is probably about, I don't know, 20 feet away from me. I'm gonna move closer to show you just how much different it is if I was right in front of the background. All right, now I'm basically standing right next to the background, I'm like, or the bushes rather, I'm like two inches away from it. Now this is gonna be a little bit of a harder thing to achieve if you're working indoors. It's specifically why I came outside today so I can get space away from the background of my image and my video. But yeah, let me know if you see the difference and how much more focused everything is as I'm closer to my background. All right, so now I wanna do a bit of a comparison because when I started this video, I had the Canon 22mm F2 mounted on the EOS M50. And as you know now, I have the kit lens. So I wanna put these lenses side by side to see if you can see the difference with the different maximum apertures and the different focal lengths. So this is the kit lens, the 15 to 45. 
at 15 millimeters, f3.5, can you spot the difference to the lens next to me? So this is just one quick example of how a different lens makes a big difference in my opinion. I think the 22 mil looks better. That's totally up to you what you think. For my taste, it looks better. I'd actually prefer an even longer focal length. So while I do prefer this 22 millimeter lens over the kit lens for making my YouTube content, it's not my favorite lens by far for producing that nice, delicious, creamalicious background bokeh and blurry background, whatever you want to call it, that we all love. So my favorite lens, like I promised I would tell you, to create the bokeh in the background is an 85 millimeter. And you probably saw that coming. A lot of people love the 85 mil. Or you thought I was going to say the 50 mil. The 50 mil is also beautiful. Don't get me wrong. But 85 just has a particular look to it that I personally love. And unfortunately, I don't own an 85 millimeter for my Canon EOS M50 system, but I do own one for my Nikon system. So I'm gonna switch over to that to kind of show you what I'm talking about. All right, so now we're on the 85 mil f1.8 on my Nikon camera. Now keep in mind, I don't even have a variable initial density filter for this lens because I don't really use it for video too often. So I'm actually at f3.5 to expose properly, which is the same as the Canon EOS M50's kit lens. But the difference here is gonna be the focal length. So I wanted to show you an example of what the 85 millimeter focal length would look like and the kind of bokeh it would produce. So next to me, I'm gonna put the kit lens and you can see it's the same aperture f3.5 because of the longer focal length. The 85 mil just looks so much nicer. Now I do need to reiterate, this is not a lens for vlogging. This would be a lens for B-roll or detail shots, which I guess is B-roll. <laughs> um, and it could be talking head like I'm doing right now if you have the space and the equipment. I'm using a wireless mic system right now, a lav mic. I have a transmitter in my pocket and a receiver on the camera. So it's not practical. Plus you need the space to separate your subject from the camera because I think I'm about six feet away from the camera right now. So a shotgun mic would really not be practical in this scenario. And if you're interested and you want an 85 mil for your Canon ESM50, then I recommend checking out Canon's EF 50 millimeter f1.8 because on the crop sensor of the m50 that will effectively be an 80 millimeter focal length you will need an adapter to mount it onto the m50 and i have a whole video about that that i'll link up here and we're back on the canon es m50 with the 22 mil lens f2 but it's as simple as that everyone just be mindful of your aperture your focal length how far away your subject is from your background and you'll be on your way to producing some nice creamy delicious smooth blurry bokeh if you have any further questions, drop a comment down below. I will get back to you and help you out to the best of my ability. And if you're curious about any of the gear that I use to make my videos, like the M50, the 22mm lens, the kit lens, the Rode Micro, the variable ND filters, there will be Amazon affiliate links down in the description. It'll bring you over to Amazon, and if you buy anything through those links, I get a small commission and no extra charge to you. It just helps me keep making videos to help you. So I wanna thank you all for watching and if you've got bokeh down and you wanna know how to set up your camera for vlogging as a whole with all the different settings, the shutter speed, the ISO, the picture profile, head over to the video on the screen where I explain to you how I set up my camera personally for vlogging and the video below that is actually how I color grade my videos. So feel free to click that. If you wanna see how I color grade and use LUTs, I'll see you over there.